Hello and welcome to Mr. Conley's Math. We got lesson 2.3.2 today. We're getting towards the end of chapter 2, questions 65 through 69. Go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to get information on future videos. Notebook set up. Make sure in the bottom right hand corner you start your homework. Expectations are as follows. Title your paper homework, write the number of the problems in the focus note margin, show your work, box your answer, and write in a complete sentence. Use the back of the paper if you need more room. All right, guidelines for using this video effectively. This is not something uh, that should be taken lightly. Watch and listen to the video. Sound should be on. Do not skip. Do not mindlessly copy. Pause the video when you need time to write or think. Put a question mark next to the problem you don't understand. Rewatch the video when needed. Ask questions in class or in the comments below. Question 65. Draw a generic rectangle to help you calculate each product. For each part, write the total dimension times the total dimension equals sum of the individual area parts, which equals the total area. For, the ex for example, the diagram at right shows 12 times 27 equals 200 plus 40 plus 70 plus 14 plus 324 equals 324. So, ooh, we're skipping it. Now, in this problem, we've got the example over here. Remember, we're multiplying like this. So 12 times 10 gives us 200 and then or 20 times 10, excuse me, 20 times 2 gives us 40. And then we down here we do 10 times 7 equals 70 and then 7 times 2 gives us 14. And that's the basics on how to do a generic rectangle. So for this one, we've got 73 and 42. These are not broken up into tens and ones. So let's do that. We'll take 73 on top. We'll say 70 plus 3. And then notice next to the plus we draw a line to break it up into 70. 7 tens on the left and 3 ones on the right. And then 42, we'll do 40 plus 2. And then break it up like that. And now you'll just multiply 40 times 70. You'll put the answer there. And then you'll take that answer and put it right there. Then 40 times 3, the answer will go here. 40 times 3 is going to be, 4 times 3 is 12, add a 0 is 120. You'll put that answer right here. And what we're trying to show you is that 73 times 42 can actually be the sum of its individual products. So 70, now we'll go to the bottom layer, we'll do 70 times 2, that'll go here. We'll put that answer right there. And then 2 times 3 is 6. I'll give you that one. I hope that you got that. So the answer is 6 right here. And we'll put 6 down there. Okay, add those all up. And you get your final answer, the product of 73 times 42. Okay, so now B is uh, the same thing, except we've got a three-digit number. So that means we're going to break it up into hundreds, tens, and ones. So let's do that on the top. We've got a hundred, so there's one hundred, there's two tens, so plus twenty, and then five ones, plus five. We broke it up into its place value. So now we'll just draw boxes for each one. And now eighty-one breaks up into eighty and plus one. Okay. Alright, so now you'll just do some multiplying. Eight times a hundred eighty times a hundred will go in this box, and then 80 times 20 will go here, 80 times 5, the answer will go here, and 1 times 100 will go here, 1 times 20, and 1 times 5. And you'll put all those answers into these spots over here. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in. Um, oh, there's only five boxes I messed up. Let's just add another box, and this whole thing that will go here, 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 and then the other three. And then the answer will be over here. And that should be whatever 125 times 81 is. You can check it with your calculator. Go ahead and pause the video and fill those all in. Uh, when you're ready, unpause and go to the next. Sure. 
66. Copy and complete the table of multiples below. Count by threes and count by fours. Extend the table so that it has 14 column, columns of value. Ooh. Okay, so. I didn't give myself enough room yet. Alright, so we've got one, two, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So you're going to keep going all the way up to 14 columns. That's only 10 right there. So on the top it says we're counting by threes, so that means we're plus three, plus three, and plus three. Nine plus three is 12, and so that means the next number is going to be what? Yeah, 15. And then we'll add three again and get 18, and you're going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And then on the bottom we'll do 4, 4, we add 4, we add 4 again, and we're going to add another 4, that's going to be 16, another 4 would be 20, and 24, and the rest you'll do until you've gone 14 columns over. All right, now write down all the numbers that appear in both rows. Describe any patterns you notice. So you'll list all the numbers here. Let's look for, you know, we'll go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 4, 8, up, oh, and notice a 12 is at least one number. And then we'll keep going. This 3 is 21. Here's a little hint as to what the other numbers are going to be. So keep going and find the rest of them. There are going to be more. And you'll put all those numbers here. And what did you notice? I noticed that. And once you do a couple more numbers, you'll definitely notice a pattern. So go ahead and describe it right here in a complete sentence. What is the smallest multiple of three and of both three and four? So the smallest number they both go into. So that's the first one. And it looks like it's going to be twelve. So go ahead and write in here 12 as the answer. That's the smallest number they both can go into. And next one, write three more numbers that are multiples of both 3 and 4. Okay, so again, that's the numbers we just looked at. We've got 12, and then whatever the other number is that you circled, you'll go here, and the one after that, and the one after that will go here. Okay, pause the video and finish that. Okay, on to 67. Jenny has been saving her babysitting money for a class field trip to Washington, D.C. She wants to save $200. Okay, so Jenny's been saving her money okay, for her last field trip. She wants to save $200 over three months. She saved 53 the first month and 67 the second month. Okay, estimate without calculating the amount that Jenny needs to earn during the third month to meet her goal. Okay, so let's look at these months here. We've got the first month plus the second month plus the third month. And that's supposed to equal our goal, which she says is 200. So that's supposed to equal 200. So if the first month, it says 53, and the second month is 67, what's the third month going to be? Come up with a strategy and figure out how to find it. Show your work over here on the side, and then put your answer for the third month. That'll be part A. For B, now show how Jenny could calculate the amount of money she needs to earn. Okay, so I guess the, they want us to estimate in this one. So you can come up with a number you think it's going to be, put it in there. Now show how you actually solve it for B. Okay, so we already have it set up. Um, you probably want to add the first and second month together, and then whatever that amount it is, subtract it from 200, 
and that'll give you your answer right here. Okay, so that mo might look like something like this. Our third answer will be the sum of these two taken away from 200, and that'll be your answer down here. You can go ahead and put it in here. Okay, so you can use the calculator to help you um, add those together, show your work on your paper, pause the video, and move on to the next problem when you're done. 268. Find three fractions that are equivalent to 3 eighths. Explain your method. Okay, there's lots of different methods to make a fraction like it. Uh, the one we've been using in class is the big giant one, where we multiply it by a big one, uh, a number that's the same. So you remember uh, the easiest we've been doing is you, you don't want to do one because that'll make three eighths, but you could do two. And three times two equals six, and eight times two equals. 16 and there we go we've got an equivalent fraction and we can use 6 16 so we can use 3 8 again and times it by a big giant one you can choose any number you want to go in there and then the answer you can put right here so go ahead and put a number in here that you want same thing over here you can use 3 16 you can do 6 16 and multiply that by 2 if you want or you can choose another number entirely it's up to you either way you need to explain how you got your answer uh, I got these fractions by go ahead and finish that sentence uh, if you use the method I just showed you then you would say I got this fraction by multiplying it by a big giant one uh, with different numbers in it or something like that okay next one and last problem, 69. Janelle and three of her friends bought four smoothies for a total of $3. If she's purchased the smoothies on another day for herself and nine of her friends, how much money will she spend? Okay, let's get help. I'll get help you get the information for this one. So first of all, it says Janelle and three of her friends. Okay, so that's one plus three equals four people. Okay, keep that in mind. I know that they try to trick you. They haven't tried to trick you yet, but down here it, uh, it did say four smoothies. So one plus three is how we got four smoothies. Now we've got four smoothies, and we know if we add the prices of all of these together, it equals a total of three dollars. Okay, so that means whatever the price is. supposed to equal three okay so if we've got one two three four of these four smoothies equals three dollars then we've got to figure out how much each one is so the easiest way to do that is take three dollars and divide it by four so we've got three dollars divided by 4 that's going to give us 3 divided by 4 that's the same as 3 fourths what is 3 fourths as is, um, an amount we know it's not going to be one dollar each because if we do one dollar one dollar one dollar that add up to four so it's going to be less than a dollar for each one and if we have three and we divide it by four dollars then that means it's going to be you can use your calculator 0 0.75 and it's 75 cents and think about it if we have 75 cents plus 75 cents that's a dollar fifty that's half of three dollars so if i add another 75 75 that's going to be another dollar fifty to give us three so 75 cents is how much each smoothie costs so one smoothie equals 75 cents okay so we know that one smoothie equals 75 cents the, la the next part of the question says if she purchases smoothies on another day for herself 
and 9 of her friends. So 1 plus 9 is 10 people. How much will she spend? Well, she's got 10 people times 75 cents each. So go ahead and multiply that together, and that gives you your final answer. 75 cents times 10 smoothies is going to give us what? Okay, figure it out, and once you do, go ahead and unpause the video and move on so that I can tell you. Congratulations on completing your homework assignment. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to Mr. Conley's Math to get updates on future videos. Thanks for watching.